Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Do you have this light on the dashboard? Or is your car telling you that your tire pressure is low? Well today I'm going to show you how to get rid of these warning lights properly and also give you a little background information on the tire pressure monitoring system. Now let's get started. Now for this Ford Fiesta, we're going to find the tire pressures right in the door jam. You can see it gives you the front, rear, and spare tire. The spare tire isn't connected to the low pressure monitoring system, so we just need to look at the front and rear tires and they should be 32 PSI. For some makes and models, you have a nice setup where you can see the tire pressure for each tire on a display. If you don't have a display, some makes and models actually just tell you which tire is low. But in my case, and in many cases, it's just going to let you know that one of the tires that you have has low tire pressure. So you're going to have to figure it out for yourself. So you want to check your owner's manual and see what the solid light means. In most situations, the solid light will mean that your tires are underinflated. Now if your light is flashing, it could mean that you're using your spare or there's a malfunction in the tire pressure monitoring system. So the light's going to go off when the tire pressure is 25% low. So if you're 1 or 2 PSI below your level, it might not go off. But once you go around 5 or more PSI below the recommended pressure of your tires, the light's going to go off. Definitely a neat safety feature. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to just visually inspect the tires to see if there's any obviously low tires. So there's the front one. You can't really tell. There's nothing uh, evident there. We go to the rear here, can't really tell here, and we cross over to the back, and that rear tire doesn't look bad, and that one looks a little bit low. So yesterday the temperature was 80 degrees, today it's 60 degrees, and at night it could get low into the 40s. So right now in a fall season, where I am, could get up to a 40 degree temperature swing. Every 10 degrees Fahrenheit, you could get a 1 PSI increase or decrease. So if the temperature is increasing 10 degrees, you could get an increase in pressure by 1 PSI. And if there's a decrease in 10 degrees, you could get a pressure that's lowered by 1 PSI. We want to use an accurate pressure reader so that we could get a good reading on this. The car has been sitting for about an hour, so the temperature of the tire is around the ambient temperature. If you do this when the tire is warm, you might have a little bit of an increase in pressure because as you drive, there's rotational friction and all that stuff. The brakes are hot and it could actually increase the temperature. Right now, we let it sit for an hour, so now we can get a really good reading. And there's our bad tire, 27 PSI. So this needs to be cranked up to 32. For good measure, it's worth it to check the other tires. It only takes a few seconds. You already have the tire gauge out, might as well. So good thing we checked. Although it doesn't look it, this is 27 PSI as well. We're at the driver's side rear tire. Let's see what this one's at. This one we're at 26 PSI. So again, you can't even tell, but it actually needs air. Remember to screw on your caps just a little bit so you don't lose them. That's a good little tip. And the last tire is the driver's side front tire. 27 PSI. So all four tires need to get pumped up. Good thing we checked all four. So luckily I own my own compressor, so I have this adapter that'll connect to the tires. After you give it a few pumps of air, just check your tire pressure, and we can see we're at 34.5, it has to be 32, so then you can just let some air out, check the tire pressure again, 33 and a half, and we're going to have to let a little more air out, check it one more time, I'm going to keep it at 32.5 because we are dropping in temperature a decent amount every day, and uh, that should be perfect. Now I don't need to show you how to inflate each tire, so I'll go inflate the tires and then we'll check to see if that shuts off the check tire pressure light. With all four tires inflated, let's see if that tire light goes off. Here's what we want to know right before we go for our test drive to make sure the light's off. It says you have to drive for two minutes over 20 miles per hour, and that's how the tire pressure monitoring system knows that it has the correct pressure in there. So the light won't go off until you're going 20 miles per hour or faster for at least two minutes. That gives it time to calibrate and check for false pressure readings and all that stuff. So let's go for that ride, and actually we don't even need to go for the ride. The tire pressure monitoring system actually shut off of my vehicle, I don't even have to go for a ride. Just to double check, let's go to systems check, and all systems are normal. So there you go. Although this seems like a simple thing, a lot of people don't know how to fill up their tire correctly, and also how to get that light to shut off. So hopefully this video was helpful, if it was, give it a thumbs up, also consider subscribing. 
The top tip for this video, don't waste your money on inflating your tires with pure nitrogen. Sure, if you get pure nitrogen for free, do it. It does help maintain a more stable air pressure, it's less likely to leak out of the tire, and doesn't hold moisture. Normal air is primarily nitrogen, it's 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and then there's about 1% other gases. If you have to pay for the nitrogen, it's not really worth the small benefits for a normal car. On average, it's 3 to $10 a tire. And while for some of you that might not seem too bad, just think about this. Every time that you want to inflate your tires, you have to get nitrogen air. Otherwise, you defeat the whole purpose of having pure nitrogen air in your tires. And if you're wondering why I'm telling you this, well, I'm talking from experience. This car came with nitrogen-filled tires, and for a normal car, you can't even tell the difference. So it's not worth the extra hassle and cost.